Thank you very much. Good afternoon. I thank uh, STAI to give me this opportunity. It is a great uh, privilege and honor for me to be invited here to speak and give this lecture, the Gundu Rao Memorial Lecture. Thank you very much. Sir, you have shown to our Sri Bhusreddy sir that coupled with national policy, state level initiative and regulation, how individual initiative at either the farmer or the factory level can do wonders. Many of the things that you have spoken, I have some parts of that in my talk. So you will kindly excuse if there is a repetition. So in the 1990s, there was a national imagination to allow for PPS, Power Purchase Agreements, where if you had surplus power, you could take that surplus power and export it to the grid. Before that, our incentive was to be as inefficient as possible because surplus bagas was a fire hazard. And if you had more bagas, where could you put it? Because you could not burn it to generate additional power to sell to the grid. I'm not getting into the current problems of PPAs and prices and all that. But if it was not for that policy of being able to supply surplus power to the grid, cogeneration at high pressure would not have happened. I think that was point one. Similarly, I remember a time in the late 90s when I discussed with Isma about export of sugar from India. And everybody told me when Europe is subsidizing their sugar exports all over the world and we are having such regulation in our own Indian sugar market, what crazy thoughts are we thinking? So I was asked to be quiet, although I went to Seattle at the WTO negotiations with Tilak Dhar because I wanted to push the point, knowing fully well that it was a difficult fight against Europe. Of course, if we look now, India two years ago sold 11 million tons, probably the biggest exporter on the place. So, similarly, in the late 2000s, 2008, 2009, Financial Express asked me when there was so much surplus in sugar prices that collapsed to 8 rupees a kilo, what can be done? And I was asked and I gave an editorial in the Financial Express that the Indian sugar surplus needs to be seen as an energy surplus and sugarcane juice needs to be converted into fuel. And actually at that time, sir, if you remember, we took our license to convert juice to ethanol. Although it made no sense, but our license for that CTE was obtained in 2009 in our Godavari factory. Quite irrelevant, quite out of place quite out of town, time. In fact, my factory people said I was crazy. But uh, I just said, jeb mein rakhte hai na, banana thodi na hai. Jab, jab mauka aega, kabhi na kabhi sarkar jaagegi. Or the time came again two cycles later. So, today again, we have to see international context, national realities, state level points, and then individual innovation. So, uh, I think I forgot. So, I see the context today as energy security for the country. I see climate change, which is a reality for the whole world. And farmer income security, which Sri Bhusreddy spoke about, about how his programs ensured greater farmer income security. It's not only that, if it was not for the ethanol program, we would have much greater volatility in sugar, sugar prices, therefore sugar cane prices, and no matter how good our policies would be, the market would be the disciplinarian, and you would have greater volatility in productions. Globally, I'm saying we have climate change, we have customer preferences, because I am seeing in many customers, they're asking what is our carbon footprint. So I think there is a great time for change. There is a Sanskrit shlok, which I like to mention, which many of you may say in your morning prayers, 
but I put it in this context, which is Samudra Vasane Devi Parvatasthana Mandale. Vishnu Patni Namastu Bhyam Padas Parsham Kshamaswame. I like that last line, Padas Parsham Kshamaswame. I am keeping my hand on this mere pair rakhne ke wajah se aap mujhe kshama kare i think what i try to say is let me have a lighter footprint as i walk this earth and i think when we talk about our footprint when every time i now say this prayer i think how we should be having a lighter footprint so we have a great reliance on fossil fuels today so i'm going to talk not about godavari somebody said that i'm going to speak about godavari i'm not going to speak about godavari i'm going to speak about Again, like I talked about exports from India, I talked about sugarcane juice being possible in 2009 as a possible imagination what can happen. I'm going to try and think again about a different imagination today of whether renewable sugarcane based industry can meet our energy needs, especially for transportation. It is a thought process. I might be completely wrong, but as I could have as, as earlier, but it is just an imagination and I'm going to challenge you to say you are right or you are wrong. Maybe this is where you are wrong. Maybe we cannot go that far, but maybe we can go so much. So this is what I want to at least try and throw at you. So climate change is a reality. Energy transition we are talking about and everybody has spoken about it today. We've spoken about ethanol, compressed biogas, We've spoken about electricity, that is our first co-generation, what we did. I have not mentioned green hydrogen here. Green hubs, which my president of ISMA, Aditya, has been very encouraging. His name is only Aditya, Suraj ke to hai wo pratik. So he is very much giving me that solar power and Mr. Naik Navar is also here. Both of them in Isaac is giving us, I'll talk about that. And sustainability, which again Mr. Bhusredi spoke about regenerative agriculture, intercropping, traditional practices, and modern science. I think uh, this is without seeing what he's seeking, I think we are borrowing a little bit from each other. So, I just, you know, we keep talking about sustainability, and my whole point was to tell us that 85% of our today reliance is on fossil fuels. So let's not fool ourselves so if we have to make that transition, and in India is also in the dark brown, which is 85%, and 34% from oil, 27% from coal, and 24% from gas. This is from a Financial Times article asking, is it going to be possible to kick the oil habit? Is it going to be possible to kick it? So this is the reality as it exists 2021, not much has changed since then. This is also just to show what is the energy consumption of what many countries are doing. Norway, on top, more than 100,000 units of electricity per capita per year. India is at 7,000. I asked Mr. Bakshi of my factory, our ED, what is it? He told me the electricity consumption in Bagalkot and Belgam districts. I divided it by the population. And our number in those districts, because this is a national average, 6,992, our average was somewhere between 1,500 to 2,000. And use of electricity is often an indicator of development of a country. So it means how do we have to grow? We cannot not grow. We have to develop. How can we do that development and do it sustainably? This is again a thought process. It is just to put the reality in front of us. This is just to show the world oil consumption. It is about 100 million barrels per day. If we want to retain our climate change below the 2 degrees Celsius mark, it has to fall. Otherwise, if it goes as is, it will go to 120 million barrels. So, whether we are okay with that climate change continuing or we want to arrest that. Again, just a bit of reality check for us to know where we are. And let's just see, 2000, our oil consumption was about 75 million. So we are growing oil consumption dramatically as is right now. So when we say we are going to reduce it to keep between two degrees Celsius, we also look at the trend of the last 20 years to understand 
how much we'll have to slow down or to reverse. This is also the reality. But now, in this, this is from British Petroleum's energy outlook. And British Petroleum energy outlook shows that if we are to achieve those targets, the share of renewables, which is today around 20% in 2019, is going to go high. There are three scenarios, and in all the scenarios, it's either 30 close to 40% or above 60%. That is incredible. For us, in the sugarcane sector, this shows a remarkable opportunity. No matter what you take, that is the worst case scenario, the growth is going from 18% to 30, for almost 40% and only in 30 years. Great opportunity for the business that we are in. <clears throat> this chart again shows that traditional solid biomass is going to come down and modern solid is going to go up. An example of modern solid is Bagas torrefaction. The moment you take something like that, you torrefy it, it becomes similar to coal. That's another great opportunity. We are the Sugar Technologists Association of India. We have to start working. There are people working on torrefaction of Bagas. How do we do things like this? This is also seen as an opportunity for growth. So, in transportation, I'll just give thoughts where I think we are today and where we can go. Again, I might be wrong. At breakfast, I was with Bhagat ji. I told him my number, Aditya was also there. I said, I don't have to do anything But they at least have not found it, so maybe you can find us all wrong. I can say alone, if there is a mistake, the two others have confirmed my mistake. So maybe there is no mistake for at least, or three of us can take the blame. So, so because I am finding it difficult. This is now what the government, I said, without a government policy, innovation or implementation does not happen. If there was no B heavy differential pricing or juice pricing or a power purchase agreement, there would be no cogeneration today. There would be no explosion in ethanol capacity today. If there was no grain opportunity, it would not happen. So this is what makes it happen. And I just showed 2017-18 before the policy where all ethanol was produced by C heavy, 150, that is 1.5 billion liters. And what was planned this year, although we will be less than that, 5.6 billion liters this year, coming primarily from the sugarcane sector, but not insignificant portion coming from the grain sector. So now, if I want to go to 20%, I need 10 plus billion liters. Can we do more? And how? And from where? So this is, of course, from the Indian Express, where I got this article from. Now, I'm just going to go fast through these numbers so that, you know, if there is a mistake, you don't catch it. So I can just sound more knowledgeable. Uh, but we are exporting. Five, I'm not talking about this year when there is a worry about monsoons, but I think India has become a traditional surplus producer of sugar. And over time, that surplus sugar will and should become converted to ethanol. So if I just take 5 million tons surplus, if that did not go to sugar, that cane would approximately be about 4 billion liters. Now, give or take, I might be wrong here and there, but I'm saying additional 4 billion liters. So if I have, uh, government has targeted 7.5 billion from damaged rice or maize, last year or this year it was 1.5 billion coming from that, so additional 6 if that target is met. Right now, I'm not going to talk about whether target will be met or not. I'm going to go with that target being met. I think 2G cellulose is another interesting point that we are in today. India has 350 million tons. I've said Baga saved at 6%. I know our factory does more. There will be, I've taken right now 6%. So that's 21 million tons of Baga saved. So if that is there, it would be around 2 billion liters of 2G ethanol. Secondly, India burns 92 million tons of crop residue. Burns, not generates, burns today. If that was converted, that would be another 9 billion liters of alcohol. I might be wrong a little bit here and there, but once again, we need government policy to help 2G ethanol. Whether it's a differential pricing for some time, just so that today there are, so if I just count this, You've got currently 5.6 billion, that was a target for this year. I add all these things together, you've got 27 billion liters that you can do. 
So if 10 billion liters was 20 percent, 27 billion liters is more than 50 percent of our gasoline consumption. So this is just a thought. I think this is possible. Of course, if you achieve it 10 years later, India's gasoline consumption will be much more. So maybe it's not 50 percent. Maybe at that time it is 35 percent. But I am only saying, I think from our business, 27 billion liters of ethanol is possible. And I think we should go after it. And I was similarly crying horse when I spoke to the then committee in 2008 or 9, Jose ethanol ke ijaza do, chini ke dam aat rupai hai, mar rahe hai. And at that time it was considered Brazil ki baat Brazil mein, aap Hindustan mein ho. And therefore I was told to keep quiet at that time because they said Brazil in reality doesn't come here. Today I see Aditya talking about complete Brazilian reality and we think we want to go ahead of the Brazilian reality. So here is where I think 2G, just like we're talking about multi-feedstock facilities, we're talking of grain bolting on. I again went to the Ministry of Petroleum and Natural Gas a year and a half ago, two years. When you're giving variable gap funding to a standalone facility, why not you give variable gap funding to a bolt-on 2G facility? We have bagasse surplus. You don't have to bring feedstock there. We need to do with pre-treatment. After that, the fermentation is together. Costs are higher. We need to work on enzymes. Problem is capex. Problem is opex. You and today, Novos, there is very few enzyme suppliers in the world. We need to also have, again, if you're Sugar Technologies Association and somebody says, don't only call it sugar, Sugar and Ethanol Technologies Association of India, somebody said to do that. We need to work on enzymes. We need to find ways to cheaply break down the cellulose into the sugars. So this is, so to do that, we need to get this because this will give us another 9 billion or 10 billion liters of ethanol. Now, I'm talking about electricity. We talk about EVs being as counter to us. I am saying, Bhagatji talked about why haven't I done 72 megawatts. Twice I did two projects. Both times I signed PPA and P they were, we are not paying. Even, even today we are struggling to get our signed dues back and it is still going on. So when that happens, but now open access is there. And you, you have EVs coming in. So what do I see? I see opportunity. I have product, I have electricity, I have market, I have cars, I have open access, can I sell directly? This is a thought. Now, power export, I'm just taking, say for example, 100 units of power per ton crushed. I put 95, uh, pardon that to make it easier. We crush 350 million tons, sorry, that 35 is wrong. We, India crushes 350 million tons of sugar cane per year. I multiply that, I think I've done the multiplication correct. I get 33 billion units and I am told new cars give you 10 kilometers per kilowatt hour. So I can travel 332 billion kilometers. And if I say petrol gives 10 kilometers a liter, I am back to 33 billion liters of petrol. Now that is 33 billion liters of petrol avoided compared to 27 billion liters of ethanol. So between the two, I am saying all my gasoline needs are met. I am saying, am I right? Am I wrong? I am saying, I ethanol se aur bijli se, jo hamare yahan se putpan hoti hai, I have met my gasoline needs. I would like it to be challenged. I honestly don't know if I am right, but it makes eminent sense to me. So, sir, you talked about um, various new technologies, Narendra Monji. I was reading a Brazilian paper. And this Brazilian paper, I have not, I have not talked it, but I should have referenced it here, my mistake. It talked about more of ethanol production in that facility, but improving ethanol and wash. Second, it talked about pen, pinch analysis. It talked about supercritical conditions. It talked about cane trash. Some of the cane trash you keep there for trash mulching, 50% of the trash you bring. With that, they have shown that a sugar factory can go to 275 units of power exported per ton crushed. 275. I would share the paper with this group. I would like us to challenge whether that paper is correct or not. 
because if I can go from 95, many of us may not even be at 95 today, but if I can go from 95 to 275, then the number of petrol is another three times it is saved. So if India is growing or it can supply or service the diesel avoided in diesel cars. So again, this is a, again, it is a challenge. Can we think big? And similarly, Satat program, the CBG, we understand there are issues with fertilizer lifting or there are challenges of to grade, but things are moving. Our finance minister talked about a mandate for uh, CBG. So I think India is targeting, again, Pressmart 4% on cane, CBG is, according to me, 5% on Pressmart. Again, if I'm wrong here or there, don't catch me on the decimal point. <coughs> I'm trying to go for a larger thought process and so I'm saying it can meet, oh, CBG only from press mud can meet 5% of India's current gas requirement. If I have bagasse surplus, I don't make it 2G, I can make it CBG, there is a trade here and there, but this is just the possibilities. Now, how to make this happen? Further, I was talking to my president of Isma Aditya and told him, you know, why don't we create green hubs? What are these green hubs? I said, we'll create a pump and that pump will sell pure green ethanol. It will sell pure CBG. It will sell pure green electricity. Ours. And in the future, we'll come to hydrogen. Because today there are flex fuel cars. Toyota is saying they will have pure flex cars ready by April 24 and we are having hybrids. Imagine today people are thinking about us as a sugar industry. Tomorrow and the way we are discussing with Isaac, is that we'll create one brand. That one brand will be promoted nationally. All our sugar factories who want to join will become franchises. And as franchises to this common brand, today we are five, six hundred sugar mills in the country. If each of us put three such pumps in the neighborhood, we'll have 2,000 pumps. And can you imagine this will be way ahead of Brazil. We will show the world that a green economy fully green economy is possible and we will show that if we do it right, entire transportation of the needs of the country will be met either by CBG, green electricity or ethanol. And this is what I think I want to challenge. Thank you. So, so this is what I mean. Imagine one national company franchise with sugar mills selling only ethanol, CBG, renewable electricity and green hydrogen. I think we have to challenge ourselves. See, the world is moving crazily. We are doing depletion in coal. So, sorry, the world is moving crazily. I talked about carbon loss. So, here is the thought. Now, you know, we are seeing carbon depletion. Gas, is de gas reserves are going down. Oil reserves are going down. Coal reserves are going down. Can you tell me what other reserves went down before that? So, if we take it in movement, there are, I'm talking about five waves. Wave one, wave two, then we, then we discovered coal, which we're depleting, then we discovered oil, which we're depleting, then gas. What do you think came before coal? Anybody? What carbon did we use before coal? Anybody? Nobody? No, no, before you are sitting in a village or in a city, today you are using gas. You are using gas. Biomass, you are right. Forests. You started cutting trees. What before that? Our Bhusrati sir talked about it. Soil. Soil carbon. Not just soil, soil carbon. It is the carbon we don't see. And today soil carbon is so depleted that carbon is a source of our nutrition and it is a source of our energy. And if we are not going to see it vanish, then there will be a time in which no matter what yield increase you want, it will not happen. Because you might have a boost ready model in UP. If you don't have other Mr. Boost Reddies who want to either replicate, you're not going to get any yields anywhere. So we need to work on this. And so that's because CO2. And so if we do all this, this is the CO2 emissions that are happening. Those have to be brought to zero. Even our prime minister has said by 2070, India will go to zero. How are we going to do it? We'll have to do it with biomass coming through soil carbon and meeting our needs of energy. And so 
This is what we need to do. We need to calculate footprint. We need to reduce fossil inputs. This is stuff that already Bhusreddy ji spoke about. I don't want to speak more on that. Low carbon farming, intercropping, and doing re drip, remote sensing, agroecology, which are traditional practices, and regenerative agriculture. We are doing work and experiment just with what is called Panchagavya or Jivamrut, where we are doing comparisons. If you do one or the other, or a combination of the three or the two, how can you make sure? And with intercropping, if soil is good, if I can intercrop with protein, I'm going to reduce the urea needs. I'm going to meet the world's needs of protein because that will also mitigate climate change. And I will make the farmer dual income and less on input and the soil will be healthier for the future. So I think this is just what I want to do. Another thing I think we need to do as sugar STAI is to work on LCAs that, you know, life cycle assessments and carbon footprints. Today, the Europeans and the Americans are creating the standards. I think it is important that we should know what our standards are and we should have our voice heard. Just like earlier in the WTO when I went in 99, we were only four people from India and the Europeans came very armed. We need to know. Today, if I have a cow there who is giving dung, who is giving urine, who is giving other things, are we calculating that if we are looking at our own urea or our own fertilizer produced on our farm? We need to have our models, we need to articulate them, and we need to negotiate. Because in the future, this is going to be non-competing barriers that are going to be imposed on us as we go forward. So, this is what I would like to say. I think we can imagine a world which is fully sustainable. And I will end with another quote from Iqbal. Thank you.